Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, free site, dwyervip.com, free site. <clears throat> Today is April the 22nd, 2018. Let's talk about the majority draw between Jesse Vargas and Adrian Broner. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, let me say this. I'm shocked at the scoring of this fight. Really shocked. I thought the fight had a clear winner. By way of background, I predicted here online in a pre-fight video that Adrian Broner would beat Jesse Vargas. Now, whatever the scoring, whatever the CompuBox numbers, and I questioned them for this fight, right? Let me just say here online that what's important isn't who I pick or isn't who the judges pick. What's important is who actually won the fight. You're a handicapper. I'm sure you want to win money on this fight. But going forward, you have to go with who actually won the fight, not what the public mood was at the time the fight went down. But go back, look at the tape, and ask yourself the simple question, who actually won this fight? Now, let me just give a little historical reference. Right? They claim if you get a bunch of old-timers in a room, They'll discuss it. They claim that if you count the body blows <clears throat> in the Hagler-Leonard fight from the 1980s, legendary fight, right? They claim that Marvin Hagler won that fight, right? If you count the body blows. Well, let me say this. I picked Broner before the fight. Let me be the first here to say I was wrong. Jesse Vargas wins this fight by at least a few rounds. There is simply no way anyone can watch from the second round through the end of the sixth round. Right? That's five of the first six rounds. There's no way anyone could look at the body punching that Jesse Vargas throws down. Dare I say it's reminiscent of his trainer, one of the best fighters I've ever seen, Mikey McCallum, the body snatcher, right, from the 80s. Jesse Vargas throws a masterpiece at Adrian Broner, takes out Adrian Broner's body <clears throat> in a way, quite frankly, that I did not think was possible before the fight. Now keep in mind, my money was on Broner. I'm just here to tell you that Jesse Vargas absolutely dominates the first half of the fight, dominates it, then holds his own in the second half of the fight, right? Let's talk about scoring a boxing match. What matters to you when I understand this fight's a little deceptive, right? There's an optical illusion going on in this fight, kind of like there is in Hagler Leonard, right? In Hagler Leonard, Ray flurries at the end of rounds. Ray's game is camera friendly, more camera friendly than Hagler's, right? Hagler has his head down, is throwing hard shots. By contrast, Ray Leonard has his head up. His is the face that you see when you look at the videos. And he's throwing fast combinations. Right? It's almost like he's posing for the camera. Now here you have the same dynamic. Jesse Vargas is doing work. Right? The wrinkle in this fight is that Vargas is getting to Broner's body without throwing hooks. He's doing it with straight hands. He's jabbing to the body. He's throwing straight right hands to the body. He's not deep in the pocket where Broner is king. He's on the edge of the pocket. 
right? And he's just shooting jabs and straight right hands to Broner's body, and Broner can't do anything about it. But then there are moments where Broner, who is a showman, who has a camera-friendly style, just like Ray Leonard, right? Broner will come up and throw headshots. Now, if you're someone who's looking for headshots, right? Broner's the person who frames what he's doing and throws a quick combination up top. Broner's a very good counterpuncher, so there are times when Jesse Vargas jumps in a bit and then has his head snap back. Right? So Broner looks good. He's fronted. Right? If you go by his facial expressions, it looks like he's doing what he wants to do. But folks, he's losing the rounds. If you're a judge, in my opinion, you cannot ignore the punches that land. Right? You just can't. You can't you can't look at a fight and feel that Broner is sweeping the later rounds when Jesse Vargas is not only outworking him but is outlanding him. Right? All I'm asking here is to please consider all three minutes of the round. Please consider the shots that land. Right? I don't buy CompuBox's connect percentage <clears throat> because my own two eyes tell me Jesse Vargas landed an inordinately high percentage of the body shots he threw. I don't think that's accurately reflected in the CompuBox numbers, as it is. The CompuBox numbers have him throwing a lot more punches than Adrian Broner. But let me just say this. Just like Ray Leonard stole rounds by throwing flurries in the last 20 seconds of a round against Marvin Hagler, what I want people to do is to look at the ninth round. The ninth round has one of Broner's best moments. It comes in the last 30 seconds of the round. The problem is that boxing rounds aren't 35 seconds. They're not one minute. They're not two minutes. They're three minutes. Jesse Vargas, in my opinion, dominates the first two and a half minutes of the ninth round. In my opinion, Jesse Vargas wins the 10th round. Somebody here in the comments section, I'm serious. Tell me exactly what Adrian Broner did in the 12th round to win the 12th round. In other words, the first half of the fight is not close. That's a showcase for Jesse Vargas. Right? It's actually painful to watch because Vargas is landing so many body shots, my ribs started hurting. Right? I, I hadn't eaten yet and I thought, man, should I, should I stop this right here? Tape it and come back to it. Because I, I didn't want to be eating food after the fight and thinking my ribs were hurting. Right? Vargas's body work is excellent. I was watching Vargas's body work and I was thinking, how would Errol Spence deal with this? How would Plug In The Elite Fighter deal with this? Understand too, in terms of resumes, Jesse Vargas has already gone the distance with Manny Pacquiao. Right? Vargas has already beaten current 154-pound champion Saddam Ali. Right? Jesse Vargas himself is a two-division champion. Right? Vargas's resume is impressive, folks. Look at the list of fighters who he has fought. So I'm looking at Vargas's body work, folks. 
This is one of the best pieces of body work I've seen easily in the last 12 months. He's working over Broner and it's novel because Broner, who has long legs, doesn't have a big upper body. I thought the fight would be a little bit different. Right? I didn't think Vargas would have the clear advantage. Clear. In terms of throwing body punches. <clears throat> so, where does that leave us? Right? Going forward, after watching a fight in which I picked Broner to win, and he gets a draw. Right? And he gets a draw. I'm just saying going forward, I'm much more bullish on Jesse Vargas than I am Adrian Broner. If I were advising Broner and someone, you know, the network, it was an exciting fight. The network says, hey, we want to do it again. I would say to Broner, hey, don't fight this brother again. <laughs> you know, you know, uh, say, hey, it was a tough fight. Uh, you know, the viewers can decide who they thought won the fight. The one judge who picked a winner, picked Broner was winning the fight. Broner has cover. Right? But Broner is a fool if he gets back in the ring with Jesse Vargas. I thought Vargas clearly wins five of the first six rounds. By the way, it's not like I gave the first round to Adrian Broner. Let's say I call the first round a draw. By the end of the sixth round, I have Jesse Vargas up five and a half rounds to a half round. Then we get to the second half of the fight. By the way, Broner's corner is pleading with him to throw more volume. Pleading with him. In terms of punches thrown, Jesse Vargas literally throws hundreds more punches than Adrian Broner. Hundreds. So the question is, during the moments when Broner is throwing punches, are those punches enough to carry slow rounds like the 12th? Like the 10th? I would say no. Right? I didn't feel, watching the second half of this fight, that Broner made up the gap. And it was sizable from the first half of this fight. Right, I thought Broner was great at looking confident, throwing the occasional great counter right hand. Right? Um, you know, hitting Vargas in the head and the end of the ninth round's his best moment. Good combination. Lands, digs in deeper into the pocket. I thought Broner looked good doing those things. But there was too few of those moments. Right? The rest of the round, he's getting outthrown and he's getting outlanded. Quite frankly, he's getting beaten by Jesse Vargas. So, I pick Broner to win the fight. Fight's a draw. I don't believe it's a draw. I believe Jesse Vargas won this fight. Right? I'm sure when Jesse sits down with Mike McCallum, and let me encourage you for all the old timers, go back and look at McCallum ending <clears throat> the hall. Julian Jackson's unbeaten streak, right? That tape is here on YouTube. Great fighter, right? These guys are going to, you know, have to sit down and just talk about how to avoid having rounds stolen from them, right? Body punchers are a little bit different than headhunters, right? Body punchers really are relying on you, the public, and the judges to make a note of the work they're doing. Because when you hit a guy in the body, especially when the guy has an Adrian Broner poker face, right, the body puncher doesn't have the benefit 
of having the guy's body snap back like a good headshot would have the guy's head snap back. In other words, we see headshots and the guy's head goes like this and we say, oh man, that was a good punch. We don't see the shot to the solar plexus that the guy leans in and throws his body at that the other guy is able to bluff, right? It's very rare where you see a guy get hit in the body and then visibly wins, right? But the body work here, I thought gave Vargas the fight. Folks, if you wanna know how to work a guy's body over without being deep in the pocket, if you wanna know how to work a guy's body over with straight punches, this is the tape to watch. The first six rounds are masterful, right? I thought Jesse Vargas won this fight. If I'm thinking about great matchups, whether it's at 147 or at 154, right? And I'm looking at these two guys. Before the fight, I thought Broner had the greater ceiling. After the fight, I know, I know, Vargas does. Let me also whine a little bit more. As I said in the pre-fight video, I thought it was an absolute joke, absolute joke, that a fight between two former welterweight champions would be fought at a catch weight. Right? Whose idea was that? Well. Of course it gets worse. The guy who wanted the catch weight, Adrian Broner, shows up at the weigh-in overweight. He had to strip down to make weight. Let me get this straight. You're going to insist on a catch weight and then you yourself are not going to come in at that catch weight? You have to strip down to make the catch weight? That's a farce. Right? That's a farce. Now let me say, if you are one of those, and many of the judges were, who believe that Adrian Broner came back in the second half of this fight, right? Let's all remember he's fighting a starving version of Jesse Vargas, right? He's fighting a version of Jesse Vargas who isn't at 147. He's fighting the 144 pound version of Jesse Vargas. If these two do sign on for a rematch, and in my opinion, it'd be a mistake by Broner, but if they do agree on a rematch, pay close attention to the details of the fight. Right? If it's at 147, and Jesse Vargas, who already out threw Adrian Broner at 144, is able to actually come in at the same weight at which he won a title, Right? That could actually be a further advantage in Jesse Vargas's favor. Let's just say the vargas McCallum collaboration is paying dividends. Right, We might soon start calling Vargas what we called McCallum, the body snatcher. He completely took away Adrian Broner's body. I mean, Broner had no answers, folks. Couldn't return fire. Right, Vargas completely takes away Broner's body in the first half of the fight. It's a shame here that not one judge had him winning on the scorecards. I'm scratching my head and keep in mind, <laughs> I was on the other side of the play betting wise and I'm scratching my head at this outcome. I had Vargas winning the fight by a few rounds. That's how I saw it. Let me hear from you. I know we're going to have disagreements. I know there's going to be the crowd out there that's going to say, hey, boxing's entertainment. It's about showmanship. Right? Adrian Broner landed the cleaner punches. Adrian Broner had some big moments in rounds. A big moment at the end of the ninth round could offset. Right? The other fighters work for the first two and a half minutes. Okay, fine. Neither fighter hits the canvas in this fight, folks. 
If you're going to talk to me about cleaner punches, tell me what's not clean about Broner having his hands up and Jesse Vargas hitting him. Right, Broner can't even get a hand down. Jesse Vargas just hitting him here repeatedly early in the fight. Folks, Jesse Vargas landed the cleaner punches overall in this fight. Let's be clear here. Vargas lands the cleaner punches. Broner lands the cleaner headshots. The last I checked, your head is just part of your body. In boxing, shots above the waist are legal. Please, let's not let's not ignore the body work here. Right? That's a big part of boxing in here. That's the big difference in this fight. I thought Vargas took it. Tell me who you thought took it and why. Let me go one step further. If your narrative is going to be that Broner dominated the second half of the fight, right? If this is going to be kind of like the conversation all of us had at the end of the first Kovalev-Andre Ward fight, where the narrative was that Ward dominated the second half of the fight, right? But they must have been sending a different feed to my television because I didn't see that, right? Well, here, same type thing. I'm hearing that Broner dominated the... <laughs> <laughs> Broder dominated the second half of the fight. This is wild, by the way. His quarter is pleading with him for more volume. Right? Give us the rounds where you feel over the three-minute round. Adrian Broner dominated to the point where even Ray Charles would be able to look at that round and say, oh, yeah, this man was clearly the winner. Right? If you're going to talk about the ninth round, Please include in your talk what you believe Broner did the first two and a half minutes of that round, right? Let's not be suckered by three good headshots after you've been hit with 10 solid body punches and other stuff earlier in the round, right? I also feel, too, that Vargas was a victim here of an unfortunate visual. Broner does bust up Vargas's eye. So you're looking at the two guys and Broner looks pristine in the face. Of course he does. Because Vargas is hitting him with body shots. Right? So Broner, Broner, who's clean shaven for the fight, right, looks pristine in the face and has the indignant facial expressions. Right? Broner is wise enough never to look hurt in his face. Jesse Vargas isn't worried about his facial expressions. Right, Jesse looks like he's caught up in a shootout. That eye, if, you, if you're not paying attention to the body shots, and if you see one fighter with a puffed up eye and the other guy with two good eyes, you might be suckered into believing that the guy with the swollen eye isn't winning the fight. But once you see the body shots, once you're, you know, reaching for your own ribs because the body shots are that hard, right? Then, then you figure out the truth, right? So somebody tell me what's unclean about the body work Jesse Vargas is doing. Aren't those clean shots? Shouldn't those have counted? If you count the body shots... How can you give Broner more than one round in the first six rounds of this fight? And those last six. Do you really think Broner dominated the 12th round? The 10th round? The first two and a half minutes of the ninth round? Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Let me also point out too. That boxing itself, scoring's a bit of an optical illusion. In other words, I watch some rounds Broner's doing badly. Then I see a round where Broner comes out, and Broner does better than he did in some of the prior rounds. So I'm thinking, okay, Broner's doing better than he did in some of the prior rounds. But that doesn't mean that even in the rounds where Broner's doing better than he did when he was getting spanked, that doesn't mean Broner's winning those rounds. 
That just means that Broder is doing better this round than he did the last round. Not that Broner's won this round. Right? So, sure, Broner did better in the second half of the fight than he did the first half. I had Vargas winning by at least a couple of rounds. At least. That's how I saw it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section to this video. Let me say this too. I think with the public right now, we view Errol Spence as the top of the food chain at 147. Right? Tell me if I'm wrong about that. Right? Keith Thurman is viewed as a guy coming back from injury. Right? Danny Garcia is viewed as a guy who lost to Keith Thurman. Right? The public seems to have forgotten about Sean Porter. People look at that Pacquiao-Jeff Horn fight and they think, wow, did Jeff Horn really win that? We have questions about Jeff Horn. Plus, Jeff Horn fought that fight in his backyard, right? You don't know how Jeff's going to do on the road. Terrence Crawford, as great as he is, is a newbie at the division, right? He's new at 147. So I believe most of the public looks at the welterweights and they're thinking in terms of Errol Spence, right? I'm just telling you that if Jesse Vargas fights Errol Spence, right, be prepared to look for body shots from both fighters. Just understand, while Errol Spence hooks to the body, so Spence wants to be up on you a little bit more. Jesse Vargas showed me he's a master at throwing straight hands to the body. Right? That fight from a strategy standpoint would be interesting to see who wins the battle of the spacing. Right? Let me also say, too, that I thought Jesse Vargas threw a very good jab this fight. Right? Vargas has not only the body attack going, he has the jabs going. Dare I say, I think that jab is better than Errol Spence's. Right? Now, I'm not saying Jesse Vargas beats Errol Spence, but we all know this comes down to probabilities. Right? And if a Jesse Vargas Errol Spence fight is announced, and if they don't insult us by having it at a catch weight, if they actually have it at 147, for the title at 147, right? For me personally, who I bet with on that fight is going to come down to the casino odds. In other words, if the casino falls for the hype or goes with the hype and has Spence installed as a four or five to one favorite, right? I've just watched Jesse Vargas dismantle Adrian Broner. I'll take my chances with Jesse Vargas to win Hedgewood Spence by KO. Right? I was very impressed with Vargas in this fight. I believe between these two guys, Vargas is the one who deserves the bigger fights based on their performances yesterday. Anyway, that's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Let me also say, too, that just like Vargas has only fought a couple times with Mike McCallum, right? Broner is now with Kevin Cunningham. Right? Cunningham's new. I'm positive. I'm positive that Cunningham was not happy with Broner's lack of volume or with the number of body shots Broner took. Right? So I'm sure Cunningham is going to say to him, hey, weren't you a little bit too upright in that fight? Shouldn't you have been thinking about bending at the waist to hide your body a little bit? Right? Also, you know, we escape this, that's the word, escape with a draw. But you can't be that low volume and rely on the judges that much going forward. Right? So it's possible that because Broner was with his longtime trainer, I believe his name's Mike Stafford, and now he's moved on to a new trainer, it's possible that we won't see the fruit of that new relationship until later fights. But let me just say, as someone who picked Broner for this fight, 
I was wrong. I thought he lost it. Let me hear from you. Thanks for stopping by.